Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, very special message this evening. Targeted individuals, modern methods, ancient technology. And this may very well be something that can help you. That's what my intention is. And uh, I do have a lot of different friends that I feel that are targeted. And uh, but more from the ancient technology than they are from the modern. Although modern targeting does happen as we're going to share some of these uh, different scenarios here with you. Fox News, I have another one here from uh, Direct Energy Weapons, very interesting one there, and even Voice to Skull Technology. I've actually shared this technology with you before the government has used uh, in uh, very interesting situations throughout history here uh, in the United States over the last, say, 40 years or so. Let's get started right away, though, with Fox News and a particular segment that they had, I think you'll find rather interesting. Listen to this. Suspected directed energy microwave attacks targeting CIA officers and top national security officials. We first started hearing about them, and we told you about them here on Special Report in 2016, shortly after then-President Obama opened the embassy in Havana, Cuba. National Security Correspondent Jennifer Griffin at the Pentagon has the latest tonight about a suspected attack here at home. U.S. officials say there are now 130 suspected victims, mostly CIA operatives and U.S. diplomats, being treated for brain injuries, debilitating headaches and vertigo, the targets they believe of a directed energy microwave weapon. There's a mysterious direct energy weapon that is being used, and it is causing, in some cases, permanent traumatic brain injury. New indications suggest the incidents go as far back as 1996. Two individuals working on the NSC believe they were targeted in 2019 and in 2020, just after the election. One was near the White House and one was walking her dog. The Russians have been working on mobile microwave weapons for years. We have to get more information and we got to tell the public what's going on. The U.S. Air Force and tech firm Epirus have developed a mobile high-energy microwave weapon to bring down drones. Epirus is also working on a miniature variant of the weapon that can be easily transported on a pickup truck. This is the type of technology. Now keep in mind what they said, easily transported on a pickup truck. That's the technology they're working on. But still, even back, uh, some of the intel that I would get is that it would be a rather large truck that would have to be sitting in your neighborhood and relatively close to you for them to be able to target you. Then again, you have to really be a high value target for them to want to go after you in the first place. So if you think you're being targeted and, you know, then you want to consider some of those uh, options there. Here's another one here, directed energy weapons, and I figured I'd share this with you guys as well. Department of Defense spends about $1 billion annually developing directed energy weapons, such as high energy lasers and high powered microwaves. These weapons can disrupt or destroy their targets at the speed of light. For example, DOD has developed high-energy lasers that have successfully shot down drones, but speed isn't their only advantage. They're also less expensive per use. Notice the size of this one right here. This is the reason why I say to be targeted by the government, by these types of uh, devices, it's pretty sophisticated, and again, you'd have to be a very high-value target in the first place for them to even consider using that. Then you have skull-to-brain technology, is which is what I'll share with you next here. Voice-to-skull technology, the future of communication or ethical quagmire. Um, this article actually brings out interesting innovations that they're planning on using in the near future. But it also did cover some of those things that I've talked to you guys about before. Such as here, the human brain perceives these microwaves as original sounds, thereby creating an effect akin to hearing voices in the head. The potential applications of V2K are varied as they are astonishing in military and espionage realms. It could offer a discreet form of communication delivering orders or intelligence without interception in civilian life. Imagine the implications for individuals with hearing impairments, offering a new dimension of auditory perception without the use of external devices. 
But yes, it's how they got uh, the whole uh, move going out off in the Middle East when the one guy set himself on fire years ago. It was skull to brain technology, planning the thoughts in a man's mind to be able to set himself on fire. And he believed it was coming from himself. Uh, but, you know, really and truly, that technology is an age-old ancient technology and it's something that Satan's been doing for a long time. Uh, let me just share with you some scriptures, but we're going to go a little deeper in this than what you perhaps have ever thought about. Here's one from 2 Corinthians chapter 10. But I beseech you that I may not be, be bold when I am present, with what confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing in captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. <clears throat> you know, that's very fascinating that he says that in 2 Corinthians here, because if we look at Ephesians as well, very interesting, we read too, Paul writes, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That, that actually, the very Greek word in there is archons. Technology, no doubt. Wherefore, take unto the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to do to stand, stand therefore. Now, the mere fact that we are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and against the rulers of darkness, one of those are archons, but it also seems to be like an ancient technology. Well, let's look at 2 Corinthians going into chapter 11 a little further here, or in a different place I should add. I think it's in 10, where we were in 10 over there, going into chapter 11. But I fear, lest by any means, as a serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. I don't know how many of you have ever looked at that passage the way I'm looking at it now. It's as if the, the Apostle Paul, who wrote this uh, particular writing, is liking the serpent's subtility along that or equ equal to that of mind control. Because notice what he said, but I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. How would their minds be corrupted? Notice he said, by any means. Hmm. For he that cometh preach another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which you have not received. Notice one is a physical coming of a message. The other is a spirit, uh, spiritual coming of a message. You might well bear with him. That really brought me to the idea that maybe we should look at the situation with Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle. Then any beast of the field which the Lord God had made and said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said you shall not eat of any tree of the garden? You know, oddly enough, if it could be, if it's true, maybe Paul is indicating, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Was Paul speaking that the serpent used 
spoke in Eve's mind? I don't know. He does give two different ways in verse 4. One could come preach another Jesus. In other words, a physical encounter, which that may be what he's referring to with the serpent. Or if you receive another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted. Notice so he even uses that word, another spirit. But remember, he's typing the serpent. Well, after all, that would be another spirit in possibly regards, if it is that he spoke to her mind. Because if we go back to chapter 2, when he breathes into the nostrils of Adam, he actually, he breathes into them, the very word life, or which is actually the spirit of Almighty God, the Chaim, the life of God. And that life come from none other than the tree of life. It eats Chaim. So the Chaim from the fruit of the tree of life was breathed into the very nostrils of Adam in a plural form, but he actually becomes ve'yahi ha'adam le'nefesh chaya. In the singular, he becomes a spirit of life, a soul of life, or his soul. Literally, it means the word le'nefesh. Nefesh is just the soul, but the lamed there is for, for the soul, was the very spirit of life in the feminine because why? He's the bride of Christ. Hmm. But in his body was breathed that life in the plural because why? Adam and Eve both had that very spirit within them. So when the serpent comes along, no doubt what we have there is another spirit. And he speaks to her. Now, we could think of it audibly, nothing wrong with that, but it just seems to be make me wonder. So your mind should be corrupted. Remember, the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility. So it kind of makes me wonder, was he speaking more to her mind? Or in this case here, she received another spirit which you have not received. Or another gospel which you have not accepted. And that's exactly what happened. The serpent came with another gospel. He came with another spirit. Offering instead the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The fruit of that which was the law. Which brought death. After all they couldn't keep the law. So death set into the human race. And of course, their children no longer could partake of the tree of life. Right? But notice, though, it is an attack on the mind. And the devil has never left that alone at all. As we know here too well in other places here. Well, actually, we're going to come to this here in a moment. Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We're going to get into that in a moment. Let me first take you here. Revelation, this is the Laodicean church age. Interesting what we read here. He says here in Revelation chapter 3, And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write these things, saith the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Again, you're going to see a lot of references that take you right back to Genesis 1, 2, and 3. Those first three chapters. The true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, increased with goods, and have need of nothing. And know not that you are wretched, miserable, and poor, and blind, 
and naked. Well, you know, technically speaking, it was obvious that two of these applied to Adam after he was formed from the dust of the ground. Well, he is formed from the dust of the ground. He is naked, goes around, doesn't know he's naked, so obviously he's blind to his nakedness. That ought to make you do some really deep thinking. Created in the image of God, and when his eyes are open from partaking of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, he realizes he's naked and now he's ashamed. Uh, there again, that ought to make you do some really deep thinking. I find this fascinating, though, because that's exactly what, like I said, what we see in Genesis. The eyes of them were both open and they knew that they were naked. Now, no, notice the eyes of them both were open. And they knew they were naked. And it's all in the Hebrew sitting. I'm just sitting there looking at it. Everything in the plural. You know, they knew. By the way, that's right there. Ve'yadau. They knew. Kiarumim him. They knew. They were naked. You see, they took of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and they realized they were naked. See, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, it has good and evil. It is a knowledge to know what's right and what's wrong. But today, according to the Revelation chapter 3 of the Laodiceans, they're blind and naked. And they do not know it. And know us not that you are wretched, miserable, poor. You know, your blind and nakedness is what makes you wretched, miserable, and poor. Notice the, the, it's just like a flip-flop, right? Because in here, wait a minute, let me get it back over there. Because their eyes come open and they realize they're naked. The people today now are blind and they're naked and they don't even know it. And why? You see, the, the serpent came and put all this stuff in their mind. I want to share with you something from the Egyptian writings here. I don't even know which one of the books this is from, but it's interesting. For it is fitting for you to be in agreement with the intelligence of these two. With the intelligence of the snake and with the innocence of the dove. And remember, that's a quotation directly from Jesus. Be ye therefore wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. And again, another illusion back to the Garden of Eden. I find it fascinating. Because the serpent comes to give them wisdom. Jesus tells you to be that wise as that serpent. But gentle as a dove. Lest the adversary come unto you in the guise of a flatterer, as a true friend, saying, I advise good things for you. Notice, he's letting you know why you need to be wise. See, we never got that. We never, we never saw that part of the scripture where it's explained why Jesus says, be wise as a serpent. But here he tells you why. But you did not recognize the deceitfulness, this one, when you received him as a true friend. For he cast into your heart evil thoughts as good ones. And hypocrisy in the guise of true wisdom. Avidity in the guise of conservative frugality. Love of glory in the guise of that which is beautiful. Boastfulness in the pride of the guise of great austerity. And the god, uh, godlessness as great godliness. For he who says, I have many gods, is godless. And he casts superlous knowledge into your heart in the guise of mysterious words who will be able to comprehend his thoughts and devices which are varied since he has great mind for those who wish to accept him as king. 
Talk about skull to brain technology. This devil has got a whole bunch of it for you. And every day, people's minds are bombarded by an ancient technology where the devil plants all kinds of thoughts in your mind. But just like this book here shows you, you did not recognize the deceitfulness of this one when you received him as a true friend. You see, the thoughts come to you as your own words in your own mind. So you do receive him as a true friend, for he casts into your heart evil thoughts as good ones. Many times you think of things, maybe you think of things against your friends. And I've experienced these things. I know people that I feel like go through this, but it's not. But do understand this here. I've, I've been watching some of these things play out in real life here recently. And it did inspire this message, but it inspired it in a good way. Because the thing is, I realize that there is a lot of people suffering, no doubt, the exact same issues and don't even realize it. You might think your friends are conspiring against you or they're doing something evil behind your back. Now, there might be cases where they really are. I'm not saying that that's not the case. But oftentimes, more than not, it's just the enemy has placed a lie into your head and you've believed it. You're targeted in a way that you have no idea of. Worse yet is when the, de the, evil, the enemy comes in, places evil thoughts in your heart as good ones, and they're very destructive. There's thoughts that people get in their minds that break marriages, destroy lives, commit adultery, murders, and everything else. Yeah, those thoughts come in your mind as well. Just as he mentions here, My son, how will you be able to comprehend the schemes of this one? For his soul-killing counsels, for his devices and the schemes of his wickedness are many. And think about his entrances. That is how he will enter your soul and in what garment he will enter you. Except Christ who is able to set you free and who has taken on the devices of that one so that through these he might destroy him by deceit. For this is the king whom you have who is forever invincible against whom no one will be able to fight nor say a word. This is your king, your father, for there is one like him. The divine teacher is with you always. He is a helper and he meets you because of the good which is in you. So I do believe when people are targeted like that, you must have a good soul because the enemy has come after you to destroy you. But we must seek Christ with everything that's within us. But like I said, the book of Revelation shows the nakedness. They're blind, miserable, naked, and don't even know it. And what happened to Adam and Eve when they partook of the tree of knowledge of good and evil? Their eyes came open and then they did know they were naked. And what was it? It was because in Genesis 1, the way they were originally created as one being, as one unit, as an eternal uh, divine expression of the Father. They weren't in physical flesh form on the earth. It's when they ended up in that form. That's why they were ashamed. They realized they had lost their first glory. Now that's my opinion anyway. Let's continue on. We already spoke of Ephesians, but let me show or share with you Matthew. Because notice, he said that they were blind, naked, and did not know it. In Matthew chapter 23, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you can pass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, you make him twofold more child of hell than yourselves. Keep that very close in mind. 
as we jump through the highlights. Woe unto you blind guides. That's what he calls scribes and Pharisees. You fools and blind, he says in verse 17. Verse 19, you fools and blind, he says again. Remember, the scripture said, if the blind lead the blind, what happens to them? They both fall in the pit. And according to the Laodicean church, she's already blind. She's naked and doesn't know it. And then, of course, in Genesis, the serpent comes along. Now the serpent has come along. You blind guides. Thou blind Pharisee, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like unto whited sepulchers. Until we get to verse 33, you serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Serpents. The same one that was in the Garden of Eden, the same one that Paul says, do not so... See, but I fear lest by any means as a serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. People are targeted today, and I've given you some of the things where people just do evil things to other people, but in reality what I'm also talking, talking about are the Pharisees. The orthodoxy today in Israel where the serpent does live, that is actually on the move to do what? They are leaders of the blind, but they are the generation of vipers as well. And they even, according to verse 35, Jesus says that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias and Arbacchus whom you slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. Again, it goes right back to Genesis. Fascinating, isn't it? Started with the serpent, comes down to the serpent, it, it'll, it will end with the serpent, and it will still be an attack on the human mind. You want to talk about targeted individuals? Making you go against your friend, making you go against your neighbor, feeling like maybe something is targeting you? Yes, I do agree. You are being targeted. And I mean that on a multitude of people, no doubt. We're all targeted in one way or the other. I get targeted just like you get targeted. The difference is, is to recognize when you're being targeted and don't accept the enemy's poison. Reject it. Repent. And do all you can to restore your friendship. If, as Jesus said, if you before you bring your offering, go and if you've hurt, sinned against your brother or your sister, go and make that right first. Then bring your offering. Today, it's not that you're taking a sacrifice, but it's your offering of prayer. We got to go make those things right. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. I hope this helps in some way. I'm sure many out there will probably make note in the comments that it's been a blessing for them. That's really the intent, is to be a blessing. God bless you. And if you feel on your heart you want to support the work we do here, we do appreciate you very much. IsraeliNewsLive.org You can contribute there. As soon as we get the junk out of the way, our uh, mailing address to Noon Institute, P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872. Or you can just click right here and you can donate online, which is even faster. One last thought for you as well. If by any chance you are interested in LifeWave, we've seen a lot of people join up and we greatly appreciate that. But let's say you yourself have been on the fence, have not made that commitment that you want to try the product. Uh, I'm going to put a link in the description below. Uh, instead of going to lifewave.com, Benoon, I'll have you go to our son's uh, website. He does this as well. It's Ethan's X39. 
And you could go to his particular LifeWay page instead and uh, sign up with him. Ethan is handicapped, and this has really turned out to be a way for him to earn a little bit of income. And he, and as you can see here, he has uh, did pretty, did fairly well this week. Made two hundred and ten dollars, so that was pretty exciting for him. Uh, but if you need, if you're, if you're becoming just, uh, if you want to be a preferred customer. Uh, sometimes you need the ID number, 219-2371 is his ID number. And uh, if you choose to sign up, uh, I'll go back out uh, to his page again. But uh, remember, if you are signing in with Ethan, and let me get, there we go, Ethan's, that's his login. Let me move out the login part. Ethan's X39, and um, and let me just make sure I go right there, get rid of that login. There we go. If you want to uh, order the products, you go to shop, and uh, it's very simple. I'll just quickly go through this for you, but when you shop, you go down to the products that you want. Everything is already there, and uh, if you want just the X39, when you click on it, it gives you two options. If you subscribe as a preferred customer, you save money. Yeah, just click that add to your cart. You go up there to your cart, and when you actually go to your cart, which uh, you right when you hover over the cart, become a preferred customer, click on that. Now I'm hearing more and more, I was on John Moore's show the other day, a lot of the people there, they're becoming the PC Plus program. They spend 20 bucks for the year, by signing up in that one. It's the same thing as preferred customer. They're on an auto ship, but the company sends them free samples every month. And as they'll tell you, it's worth more than the $20 that you get and they're sampling products and they're finding out that they really like them. So that's another option you could do. And then of course, if you wanted to become a distributor, you go to join, you click that. I think the smartest thing is go straight to gold. Because as a gold member, you automatically earn four ways in the company, depending on what you want to do. If you're a doctor, you may not want to participate in anything dealing with multi-level marketing. You just want to sell to your patients. Well, gold is perfect for you. And just X out all those things that they're offering you there. And then go over here, click on patches and customize what you want. Not everybody just wants the X39, right? You might want X39 and maybe you do want one for you and your wife. So you click it twice. You might want an X49. You've heard about that, helping with the bones, etc. Uh, you might want, though, as a, as a lady, you might want SP6 to balance the hormones. You might want the Eon patch. Why? Because that helps with inflammation in the body. Carnosine. It has been proven in case studies to help with dementia. Glutathione causes your body to produce it. And every one of these, by the way, these all these patches are non-transdermal. They use your body's light therapy uh, to reflect back in your body. It stimulates different peptides in the body and as a result causes your body to produce. X39 causes that, uh, those, that GHKCU, which is a copper peptide that stimulates your stem cell growth, causes all that to reactivate when they're totally dormant by age 60. And when it comes to other things, the Eon stimulates your body to, to block the, um, uh, or the, or to stop inflammation. Uh, and glutathione makes your body produce glutathione, just like the sun makes your body produce vitamin D3. Anyway, I, I put a bunch of patches in there and you'll see it's actually more than what you would have got, mainly because other patches are less expensive. But that would have been a great way to, to actually become a brand par partner and also experience multiple different products as well. Great way to try it, a great way to get started. And so if you want to do it, again, go to lifewave.com, Ethan, E-T-H-A-N, X39, and, uh, and you will be right there on his page and you can order with him. God bless you and thank you for listening.